Now, we learned to connect. It was, we were desperate to connect with other people, okay, because you don't want to be alone. If I don't, it, the, one of the most important things I could say today, and I hadn't even planned to say it, is don't fight alone. <coughs> don't let your people be alone when they're hurting, when they're down. You go to them. Come along and just be beside them. Let them know you value them. They're important. And that really gets to the second part of connect. The first part, though, I was talking about the talents. We have different talents. Everybody cannot take torture the same. Some people can take more. Some of the guys could take a lot more than others. And some guys could take very little, doing their very best. It's just we're not the same. We're all different. And as a leader, if you expect all your people to be able to do what you can do, you're going to be greatly disappointed. It ain't going to work. I work 60 or 70 hours a week. There are not many people my age that can do that and have fun with it, okay? I don't know why I'm that way. I'm just, that's where I am. I have that talent. Some of your people are going to work 40 hours a week. Some will be willing to work a little extra. Some will be hard to get to work 40 hours a week. <laughs> Connected based on who they are. Now, I threw this slide in at the last minute, so I'm going to have to hurry here. 40% of the population is naturally wired for results by their personality talents, okay? 40% is naturally going to go toward relationships. 20% have some of both. Whatever you have, you need to learn to do some of both, okay? And you don't have to learn a lot to get a better balance. You learn a few skills to balance you out, and it will, that little bit of leverage goes a long way. So think about that as we go through here. So we had Denton, Commander Denton. He was a senior officer there, and at times the senior ranking officer at the zoo camp, for instance. He was tortured. Now, Denton is an extrovert and a communicator, natural communicator, always innovative, communicating, very positive, upbeat kind of guy. Great leaders, this is from some of Gallup's research. It says that great leaders really understand one thing you need to know, and they lead and manage people differently based on individual unique talents and personality. Well, this guy managed himself. He was tortured to go to a press conference, and he was supposed to say that the bombing is wrong and the U.S. government needs to stop the bombing because it's not right, and it's basically an anti-war statement. Well, he gets in front of the cameraman and those bright lights they had in those days, and the reporter asking the questions. And the first question is, well, what do you think about your country's policy on the war, on the bombing? And he said, I've been here a long time. I don't, he'd already been there two years. He said, I don't know what my country's policy is on anything anymore, but whatever it is, I support it 110% in your face. They almost dragged him out for another round of torture right then, but they didn't want to lose face in front of the reporter who had come in and set up. So they let him answer a few more questions, and in the brilliance of those lights, he started blinking his eyelashes, his eyes. Morse code, T-O-R-T-U-R-E. He blinked it twice all the way through. It's the first time the U.S. government knew for sure what was happening with our treatment, that he had been tortured, and he had been brutally tortured to make that appearance. This guy was amazing. Managing, most people couldn't do that. One, they might not have the courage, but two, just to be able to think about do that and to pull it off and not get caught, he didn't get caught. U.S. Department of Defense, DIA and CIA picked up on it right away and wrote, it, wrote down the code and said, oh, okay, we got it. Amazing. Another one of our great leaders up there, we had really a triumvirate, Reisner, Denton, and Stockdale. They were all shot down in August, September 65 at the very beginning of the war. They were all there seven and a half years. They were all senior ranking officers at one time or another in one camp or another, and they all had a powerful impact on us. You see Stockdale up there, MOH, Medal of Honor for his courage and his resistance and leadership in the POW camp. He was a very results-oriented person, introverted, but he had a profound relationship and concern for his people. And he really developed that a lot, I think, up there because he had to live alone. 
because he was beaten down and he was needy for connection with people. He was desperate to connect with people. He said that in his uh, writings after the war, he said, from this experience, eight-year experience, I distill one all-purpose idea, and that idea is that you are your brother's keeper. He valued people. I don't think that was always his thing, but he came to value people because he knew that he couldn't do it all, that he had to depend on people, and that somehow people made his life better and enriched it and helped him accomplish his mission. So we have these three leaders that I've talked about today. So the one thing I want to point out is he connected with our hearts. He connected with people's hearts. That's the other connect. Connect based on their personality and talents. Connect with their hearts. This is one of the most important things you can do as a teammate or as a leader as a person. Connect with other people's hearts. To show them they're valued. To show that what they're doing is important. To show that they have meaning in, in the organization, in their life. When you do that, you light their fire. You inspire them. It's like giving them energy to perform and to be the kind of person you want to be. So, this idea of connecting with your heart. Every person wants to be heard, valued, feel important.